Welcome to Focus. I'm Pearl Alley, your host. And tonight we have a guest that's come back again because we loved her work so much the first time. Gladys Valalopos, and welcome back to Focus. I'm so oh, glad to have you here again. I'm glad to be here again. Now, for those who haven't seen the show, and hopefully they, they have seen it, but if they haven't, tell us a little bit about what you do. Well, what I do right now in the past few years is only work art, artwork on silk. Um, I just fell in love with the um, silk. I do use dyes and uh, paints, and I do all kinds of things imaginable on silk. I do pillows, or scarves, handbags, all kinds of things. Silk is a beautiful um, fabric to work with. Now, you've been doing this for how many years? Uh, working only on silk for about four years now. And what did, what did you do before that? Before that, um, out of college, I took um, art. And I started with watercolors. I did oils, acrylics. But of course, you do so many things here in your life. I put the art wor uh, world, for me, a little bit aside. And I started be, uh, working on simultaneous interpretation, English, Spanish, Spanish, English. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've done most of my life until I came back to my art again when I moved here to Brevard County over seven years ago. Now, where are you from originally? Venezuela. Venezuela, what a great place to be from. It is, it's very tropical, it's very colorful, but uh, Florida is very colorful too, and yes. the weather is nice, similar. Very, very close to it, I've heard. Yes. Yeah, I've had some, some friends that are from there. Um, you're also going to do a demo for us tonight, and before they, everybody gets started, maybe we can just give them a, a little bit of a hint in case they want to pick some of these things up. Uh, soft brushes. Oh, and tell yes. us a little bit about what you need for, to, work to start. To on silk, of course you need the silk, okay. uh, white silk, and then you need soft brushes because uh, the way silk is so soft, you need something soft to work on it. Then of course you need what we call the um, guta or clear. And that's the one on the bottom here. I don't know right. if they can zoom in. Can somebody zoom in on that? I don't know if somebody... Can we get a zoom in on that? This is a clear... Um, a clear uh, resist to help stop can, the flow of the I dye. Guess not. So we'll, we'll just put that down. I guess we can't zoom in on it. But uh, now you have you have uh, silk dyes and paints. And what kind of dyes do you use? What, what are the dyes? Well, the kind of dyes I use are green label. They call Jake Word, they're silk colors, and okay. those are dyes. Let me hold that up. You can Maybe also use can. paint for silk. Can but anybody I rather, zoom in on this? I don't know if they're zooming. No, nobody's zooming in. But I'd rather use dyes because they keep the shiny color mm -hmm. alive. And where can they get this? I get them through the internet to different uh, companies that sell the uh, silk supplies. One of them is Dharma, um, Dharma International. They um, they also have Dick Blick. Um, Dick Blick Art Supplies. Art supplies. Okay. Just so they know how to get them because I, it's not something you just see anywhere. I'm sure there's stores that carry it. And then the Gouda, same thing, right? The you get the, all, the, all the same supplies yes. from the same place. All the supplies, I order them from the same places. I have shopped around, luckily, mm -hmm. and I do believe there is a place down in Melbourne that do have them a little bit, not that much. Now, what about the silk? Where do you pick that up? Silk, I order it online, too. Remember that silk is imported. It comes from China, Asia, Japan, and uh, I have to order it mm -hmm. through Dharma Trading Company. That's where I get my silk from. Okay, Dharma, Dharma, Trading, Dharma Trading Company. Company. Okay. So tell us a little bit about what you brought with you today, and then we can, because we're going to move these out of the way a little bit. This is okay. just wonderful. These are this some of the pieces that you've already latest, done. This is one of the latest handbags that I have I come it. out with. I love it. It's very handy. Remember that silk is a very strong fabric, so that you can put many things in it. it oh, will yeah. Work. I love this. And it's easy to tie on the top. I'm going to try to make them longer. There are people that like to the handbags to uh, fold down a little longer than mm -hmm. that one, but I, I just love it. Well, what I love is your your painting on here. Oh, it's just phenomenal. I mean, they look just <laughs> gorgeous. You're, you're just phenomenal. I love this. That's one and of my favorite you've colors. You've got, like, right around here, that white that's around there. What is that? That's from the Gouda? Is that's that right? The, the, the wax resist? That's the outline from the clear resist mm -hmm. that and you have to use in order for the dye 
a stop to stop the flow. Mm -hmm. It stops the color where you want it to stop. And it's kind of a thick medium it's so that when you put it on there, you get a, it, it takes a few minutes to work you, in and you have to let that dry first. You Is have that to let it dry, yes. And after you wash it, after you finish your work, steam your work, and at the end you wash it, it will wash it out. Okay, and here's another piece here, if we can zoom in on that look at this this is just you do beautiful work uh, I just everything I we're, we're just ooing and on everything <laughs> that you've brought in today thank you and the last time you brought everything and we were doing the same thing now you brought a couple different items this time that you that you're doing and working on a tie is one of the things pieces exactly. that you're working exactly well. I try to make different things all the time mm -hmm. and I'm just going to turn this around a little bit so you can see even the That's backs envelope well. type so envelope can, type so you can clean that up and take this apart. Right, you take it up, apart, wash it, and, and then the put it back inside. on. inside, that's yes. beautiful. Very nice. Remember, silk, you can wash it, because mm -hmm. I have steamed the color enough to keep it set in. Mm -hmm. So you can wash it and put it back on. Now you also have a couple of little pieces. This, I love this now. You've got a little... Eyeglass case that, so that you, it, I brought my works. eyeglasses and I'm just going to plop those in there. And the patterns that you put on here is what is just phenomenal. It works both for sunglasses and reading glasses. Mm -hmm. I have that little sea turtle, which is very famous here Here's in Florida. Sea turtle. And a lot of people like it, so I thought it would be a good design to play with. And I so just, you just you just do all kinds of things all with kinds these. Of things, whatever. Is it hard to sew with with silk? Uh, I mean, it's got to be hard. It's a, it seems like such a fragile thing to work with. Yeah, well, with. sewing is a little bit harder because silk is so soft. Mm -hmm. So you really need to know a little bit about sewing if you want to do something like this, and if you want to go into fashion and things like that. This is what we call the tapestry. Let me just get through one more here, and then we're going to start you painting. This and is this the, is your hunt. You can hang this you up. You can hand them to cover small spaces on the wall, like little columns and things like that. I I think it's beautiful. I like the color of it. It's so alive. Oh, I do too. And you have a nice way of just putting the darker, you know, light color <laughs> and then a dark color to contrast it. To That's me, just beautiful. I feel that you don't have to be afraid of using colors. Use darks. Use lights. Just mm -hmm. bring the painting. Give it life to it, mm -hmm. and you can only do it through coloring. Well, let's see. If we'll talk about some of these other pieces you have in the second half. You're going to be here all the whole half hour, which Ooh. I'm so excited. <laughs> you're going to do this all Hopefully over again. Hopefully, I'll be able to finish this one. This, as you can see, I have it already stretched on the wooden frame. Remember, the silk um, has to be stretched on a frame, mm -hmm. and then I use the little push pins to press the silk onto mm -hmm. the frame. And then normally you do the outline using the clear resist, which is all around it. And just to avoid the dye from falling out mm -hmm. of the frame. And I also have outlined already this white part of the tree. This is going to be a weeping willow. That one is done with a clear resist. And then the, um, the shape of a willing, weeping willow is with a dark metallic resist which we call guta mm -hmm. and that's this one right and here and that's that one right there and okay so that's a it's a darker shade yes it is just and to give it the uh, shadow effect and right the, and th this way you can actually see your drawing before you even get started is that exactly. what, so you draw it out first before with that before i do this i use i normally sketch my work with the air pen that washes away once you put okay. the color in it okay and that's this is called Air pen. Or Air pen. Okay, a, invisible ink. Exactly. It washes right out. You draw with away. it. Can we draw on something just to yeah, see if maybe, how it works? Yes, you can see a little Go bit of the blue here. Uh huh. You can see if I'm going to add something here. I just draw it. Maybe lift that up just yeah. a little bit because we're getting a glare there. And there we go. We can use a purple so it's darker, and it will wash out mm -hmm. once you put the water on it. Okay, so, so it just drawing. gives your pattern. Right. Now, do you draw these freehand or do you? I do it freehand mm -hmm. normally. Every now and then I take photographs and then I start trying to do things realistic. But normally, I, it's whatever comes to my mind at that special time, mm -hmm. then I start just playing with the sketches and okay. drawing directly. Now, we want to see this get painted. So, so right now we have the Whip and Willow, which is one of my favorites. 
So most of the colors that I'm going to use are going to be greens and blues, coming mixing some purples in it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start with a brown, which is the la, the center of the tree. I'm going to use oh, okay. this brown. Now I don't know if they're going to be able to zoom in on that without it coming up a little bit. There we go. I that, can that's go good. Like this. And as you can see, see how the dye flows and it keeps moving on its own. If I put a little bit here. So you have can. to pretty much do a little bit at a time, right? Yes. You don't want to put too much, otherwise it goes over. Unless you want darker places. Mm -hmm. And if you want the darker places, then you play along a little longer on that side. Oh, look at that. Now you have to make sure that the line, the outline is thick so the color doesn't go to the other side that you don't want it to go to. Now that, that gouda is stopping the ink from going yes. or the, the paint from flowing through. It is it is. ink or paint or dye or what? It's dye actually, it's right? Dye. It's dye. It's fabric dye. And then we're going to talk about later how that you're going to set that dye afterwards so that it doesn't come out of the material. But we'll wait a little until you get some of this done. Right. Sometimes it, if it goes out, like right here for example, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter because when you're going to play with the next color, then you can play with it, blend it in, make it, bring, make it part of, the, uh, of your work. Now I have to remind everybody that you're doing this upside down. Yes. Which is unbelievable to begin with that you <laughs> think, uh, goodness, that you have it drawn out because uh, I know a lot of people wouldn't be able to do that. But isn't that like drawing with the upside, uh, the right side of the brain, that book? <laughs> yeah, you that's true. You know, it's true. a drawing with the right side of the brain. They have you do upside down so that you're actually looking at the shapes you know, and form I, more than... I think that the fact that I've been doing the interpretation, English, Spanish, Spanish, English, most of my life, my mind and my brain works upside down. Sideways. You know, sideways, <laughs> anyway, because my mind is used to changing, flipping from mm -hmm. one thing to the other. So now, is, let, maybe we can bring that up again. I put it down just to rest my And we just have a few more minutes, so we'll get some of this done. And then in the second half, you, if you do have inks and dyes and that kind of thing, maybe you could play around with it just oh, to sample definitely. it at That's home. That's exactly uh, what I'm going to do. During the break, we're going to take a short break in a few minutes. So. And see, the, if you press it down, it stays darker. Mm. And then it starts moving. The same thing, if I put water to it, it will leave sort of like a white line, mm -hmm. white lighter mm -hmm. colors, and you'll see at the end the difference. The difference. Now, you have these displayed at what, uh, right at what now, area, or how can we purchase that if we were interested in buying I'm one I'm displaying of your right now over at Carolyn Seiler's studio, which is in Coco Village, just by the park mm -hmm. on. Um, Coco Village, close to the um, river, where the river is at, mm -hmm. and they have a beautiful studio. It has about 12 local artists displaying work. Well, she's had all kinds of things. That was the boathouse, I think, boat? Boatyard. Boatyard, and then it went from boatyard to the uh, birds, something? Uh, the Bad Birds. Bad Birds studio. It used studio. to be the Bad Birds, right, right. but now it's become Carolyn Seiler um, and Friends. Okay, studio. so people know, I'm sure they know her. She's been around for a long time. Oh, yes, and right now she is offering the, um, the uh, summer camp for the kids. Well, um, we're, we're going to take a short break, but we'll be right back with more focus, so stay with us. Okay. Welcome back to the second half of Focus. I'm Pearl Al, your host, and in the studio with me I have Gladys Vallelopos, who's a silk painter and doing a fabulous job. We've had her come back again, and we won't talk too long because you've got a lot to show and a lot to do yet. She's been working on during the break, uh, trying to do a little bit more of her silk painting. And I would like to show some of the pieces that you've already done uh, while you're still painting, and we're going to come in on that. But this is 
absolutely gorgeous. Now this is, tell us a little bit about this piece. That's I'll just one of the largest uh, shawls, we call them. You can wrap them around and it's a beautiful fashion tool for you. To, if you're going to go out at nighttime, you have a, a fancy dress, you can put that on and it keeps you away from the um, cold. Remember that. That's just gorgeous. Remember and you have a little so clasp here. Yes. To hold those in. I'm beginning to make them too, uh, just to help you keep it in place because mm -hmm. silk is very soft and it tends to fall off. Now I'm going to kind of zip through these because we've got a lot of pictures to show of your work. And this is a gorgeous, gorgeous scarf. That's Look at this. That's a scarf. I I'm love puppy flowers. And I think I went carried away with the puppy flowers. I just love this though. Oh, this is just I do beautiful. Too. They're so beautiful. And you paint the green and everything. You do the whole thing, right? Yes, when you're this doing one this, you can see the effect of salt. When you put salt on the dye, which is still oh. wet, that's the effect it gives you. I might try to put a little bit here in this work that, that I'm doing. That would be, yeah, I'd like to see that. Yeah, once I get into the blue. And now this was another thing, a new new product that you're, a new line of ties that that's you've got out. The line for the gentlemen, especially now that we have Father's Day coming so soon. I figured that it would be a good idea to That's make it. That's just gorgeous. Very, very beautiful. <laughs> and we do have some pieces that um, on the monitor, if they could bring those up for everybody to see oh, some of your other pieces that you've done. I mean, you've just done all kinds of things. And again, you have these, you can get, if you want more information about your work, you can go on your web page, right? Oh, yes. And you see more go. of your things. Now, here's another tie that you've done. It's just gorgeous. That's artistic one. There's a lot of people that like to see designs in their ties. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go and play with it. And it's coming out pretty nice. People seem to like them. And, and this they, is just, uh, now you're doing actual scenes. Is this a, something you'd hang or? Well, that's uh, wall art. It's framed, okay. and I call it Florida Nights. And now I I didn't use the resist. I didn't use Guta. It's plain colors. Oh. I was just playing with the colors and mm -hmm. let them blending in. And then the trees, I was able to do it with instead of wetting the brush in water, mm -hmm. I just used directly the dye on top of what I had already. Done. Mm -hmm. so Next, and this one's a pillow. That's a pillow, and it's painted on both sides. But I just took a picture of the front, and it's very beautiful. I like the effect it came out. I love your work, and this is another pillow here, right? Yes, with that, a different scene. That's a different scene. That's going to the beach and the ocean. That's so you do a lot of pillows. You oh. do more functional pieces, right? Yes, and that one is nice. Teenagers love it. I thought that it was going to be teenagers, but actually people in the 50s and 60s oh, love yeah. it because it brings them back memories from the 60s where they Oh, that's that cute. Look. This is really cute. The back of a, a couple walking, putting their hands in their pockets. That's cute. <laughs> Very cute. So you just have a variety of ideas. Now, where do you get up some of your ideas for this? Ah, uh, uh, my imagination. I love sitting out in the porch and watching the nature and the scenery. Mm -hmm. I love watching birds, landscape. Wherever I go, I'm observing everything. That's a woodpecker. It wakes me up every morning uh, in my backyard. He starts going ba 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 bangy in his beak in the tree. So, so you I, can get really detailed with oh. your work. I mean, I, everything that you've done so far that I've seen has been so detailed. In, in I, I get carried away, although I do play with colors like I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not being asked to tell, although I already outlined my work. But it does, you know, if you play with the colors, knowing mm -hmm. where to go darker, where, where to go lighter, it gives a beautiful effect. That's a puppy. See how oh, you that's play gorgeous. with colors. And see here I have the white resist, which... You really don't see where you're ending it, but it just stops, the, it stops the inks. And we also have a, a beautiful, uh, you've brought in a uh, room screen, divider, a room screen. divider. And we'd love to look at that. If we could come in on that, that would be beautiful. And this is just, 
Now your husband does the woodworking. Yes, that's from true. From doctor to <laughs> from orthopedic <laughs> test surgeon to wood carpenter. Wood carpenter, right? He he does all my frames. He does the room dividers, the frame for it. He helps me whenever I don't know how to hang it, how to do it. Then mm -hmm. he comes with ideas, and that's voila, that's what comes out. They're, that's absolutely beautiful. And you're saying that these birds are from your yard? You have them yes. sitting in your yard? Oh, so. yes. I have a little water pond, and there's always a blue heron around and the little blue bird. So. Now, you have a booklet out also to talk about the scarves that you do. If maybe they can come in on that and see. Uh, this is, would it, tell us a little bit about your um, book. I decided to write something about how to wear scarves. People, many people don't know that there are so many different ways you can wear them, and they're very fashionable. Actresses wear them, and it has a history. So I started writing about a little bit of history, how to wear a scarf, mm -hmm. how people started wearing them, made out of silk mm -hmm. especially. And then I started drawing and pictures of different ways you can wear them. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm doing right now. That's my original and I plan to see if I can publish it. Mm -hmm. So if you get, if you buy one of your pieces, then you, that comes with it, or is yeah, that how it works? Or that's do they what buy I'm, the separate, or? That, they could buy them separate, because okay. you know, it, has, it involves research, involves pictures, involves mm -hmm. lots of things. So I plan to maybe, not too expensive, it's gonna be a, a, a cheap type of thing, but I'm sure people, it's something that will help people mm -hmm. to buy scarves and learn how the different ways they can wear them. Very it's nice. not only you can tie them around your neck, you can wear them so many different ways, and that you can see through those little pages. Now, do you ever paint on other materials outside of silk, or is it just the silk? Oh, no. I started at the beginning. I major, my major was commercial art. My minor was watercolor. Mm -hmm. uh, that was years ago. And then I went into um, oils at the Corcoran Gallery of Art in uh, Washington, D.C. Then I went into acrylics, and I did lots of experiment with art, mm -hmm. different medias, different things, until I came out with... Uh, silk and I just fell in love with it and more or less what I just do right now. Now we talked a little bit about it uh, off, off the set as far as how do you set this ink now once it's done in here or put into the, the fabric you have to set it somehow so it doesn't wash out. Exactly there are different ways the way I use it and I will always do it no matter what kind of dye or paint I use is through steaming. After I finish doing my work, I wrap it on newsprint paper. Okay. I just wrap it, lots of layers of a paper, and then I cover it with aluminum foil. And then I just put it in a pot, like when you steam your vegetables. Mm -hmm. It has a basket on the top, so I put a little bit of water, put the basket on the top, and I put whatever I have wrapped in a paper and aluminum on top. And I okay. just let it steam there for about two hours minimum. Mm -hmm. No matter what I use, if I use um, paint or dye, mm -hmm. I do a steaming. Because mm -hmm. that's the only thing that assures me that the color is not going to wash away. Well, I really am glad that I know this technique now. And I know our camera lady, Cindy McKee, she started doing silk painting as well, so Wonderful. She, I know she's just having a ball watching you do <laughs> this, because we were talking about it earlier, and she was real excited about it. You know, silk was very famous once, mm -hmm. and it's coming back. Well, I think it's something, it's just like glass blowing, you know, it, things like that never go out of style. And exactly. Painting in any form, it's, it's, these are the types of things, the thing that's new about it is that what people are making from them. You know, they at one point it was just you'd make the material and sell the material, but now you're actually sewing things, you're making your own products. I am trying to do lots of fashion now. Uh, I forgot to mention that I'm going to be going to um, New Mexico. There's going to be an uh, art festival. It's International Silk Artist. Oh, how There's wonderful. There's going to be fashion shows, workshops. It's going to be a whole week. Starts on July 22nd until the 27th. and famous silk artist all over the world, I'm going to be in it. In now, there. do you take your stuff and sell it there also, or is it just a no, place to go it, Well, of course, there'll be people who will be trying to sell their work, mm -hmm. but it's mostly sort of like 
people, still artists, to get together and learn from each other, mm -hmm. learn from the masters, and that's what I want to do. I want to mm. learn. I want to just take as many workshops I, as I can, and then learn more and do more things on silk. Cause mm -hmm. There are so many different things you can do with silk. It's unbelievable, and people don't know all the things you can do. Now, I'm noticing you've used the same brush, and it's a little sponge brush. <laughs> and I asked you earlier, and I said, you know, that's a little, you talk about soft brushes, but you haven't taken that, you haven't stopped using that one little brush. <laughs> because uh, to me, a sponge helps you better when you put the dye in, it moves. See, the way you do, if you go like that, see mm -hmm. the different shapes, mm -hmm. different effects in the water. So that's why I use it so much. Now, if you make a mistake or you don't like something, can you take it out or if it's pretty much set in there once oh, you put it? You can take it out. You can make something out of it. You make a mistake, then try to make it part of your painting. And so there's no mistakes in art. That's what I always to say. To me, there's no mistake in <laughs> there's art. There's no mistakes. Yes, learn to play with it and make it part of your work. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this you can you're able to see more or less what's coming out. I tried to do stop doing the tree and I just came around so that you could, you know, more or less have an idea of what's coming out. Now after you're gonna let this set on this on this for how long do you let it set before you pull it off? Oh uh, well, I do and do some other things and I let it for a few hours. Because it does it pretty it takes a little while to dry, right? But it's it's so thin, the paint, that uh, the, the dye, it's almost like it's just going right through there. You rinse this out? Uh, oh, geez, Gladys, we've run out of time again. Uh, it comes so fast when we get, oh, we're having I'm such so a good sorry. time. I'm so well, glad you are able to be on the show with us. And well, you'll have to come back again, and if somebody wants to buy this piece, you that's just go true. online and find and it. This is more or less, this is my first Whippin' Willow. And we've got to say good night, so we'll okay. have to say good night as we view on her picture. And until next time. Good night, everybody. <laughs>